Hello. Let us present how to handle fair scheduling in a private academic Kubernetes infrastructure. First of all, let us introduce ourselves. I am Lukáš Hitmanek, I am architect at Masaryk University in Czech Republic and my colleague Dalibor Klusáček is researcher at CESnet, which is National Research and Educational Network, also in Czech Republic. Uh, so, the Czech research infrastructure is currently built on two approaches. One is HPC and the second is emerging Kubernetes infrastructure. HPC infrastructure consists of 30,000 of CPU cores, 15 petabytes of storage capacity, and this infrastructure is used by 3,000 active users. Those users are running 20,000 jobs each day. Uh, Kubernetes infrastructure consists of uh, 2,500 CPU cores, it seems to be smaller. Uh, it has uh, half petabytes of dedicated storage capacity, it's uh, currently used uh, by 130 users, and those users are running about 1,000 pods uh, every day. Uh, this talk is focused on our Kubernetes infrastructure that consists uh, of a large single multi-tenant cluster. Uh, it means that the cluster is uh, shared by many users, they do not have admin privileges or, uh, and are only given namespaces to run, run their pods. Uh, basically, we have uh, two kinds of jobs, uh, interactive and HPC jobs. So what's the difference? Interactive job uh, needs to run as soon as possible. Uh, also, they usually do not have uh, limited runtime and they typically burst. I will speak about this a bit more later. Uh, contrary HPC jobs uh, can wait in queue, they have a strict maximum runtime limit and usually we have more jobs than uh, resources, so they have to wait in, in queues. Of course, we want to, to use our infrastructure efficiently, but it presents some challenges. The first one is bursty nature of interactive jobs. They typically run for a while and resting remaining time. But what to do with allocated resources? Those jobs are mostly stateful, so they cannot be easily restarted. And in the graph below, you can see typical runtime of uh, interactive job. Another challenge is uh, how to prevent uh, resource wasting. We collected uh, statistics for uh, several months and we see that uh, most ports had uh, significantly overestimated request allocation. The red line represents idle state, but as you can see, most allocations are below uh, those namespaces are actually do, do not uh, represent. They do not represent uh, a single pod, but uh, usually several pods. So the situation is uh, even a bit worse. Uh, we also see other problems, such as uh, it is impossible to modify pod priority dynamically or adjust to general or tight uh, pod allocation. Uh, because uh, if we change uh, allocation, the pod has to be restarted. This is no problem for stateless uh, mic microservices, uh, but it is usually a bigger deal for long-running sci scientific computation. You can easily imagine that if such computation is stateful and runs for one month, it's not a good idea to restart it uh, several times a week or something like that. Luckily, there is community work in progress. One comprise uh, change uh, resources without restarting pot. This is very promising work in progress. And also checkpoints. Uh, once the Kubernetes will support uh, pot checkpoint and restore, uh, we can deal with uh, some of the problems as well. Uh, there are also problems bound with uh, scheduling. As a common HPC bit uh, scheduler uh, behaves uh, in the way that when the file system is uh, when the system is full and uh, new 
user arrives, you can always stay, tell the user what uh, is their priority or roughly, roughly estimate when the running jobs of other user will terminate or even provide them uh, a non-destructive reservation. Uh, scheduler also make reservation for big jobs. It means that uh, if uh, user request a job that uh, each whole node, like uh, 64 CPUs uh, or something like that, then um, uh, HPC scheduler uh, will do reservation on that node and on the, uh, some of uh, such nodes and uh, prevent uh, smaller job to arrive or occupy these nodes. And this is all automatic. In Kubernetes, it is impossible to estimate pot wait time. Uh, when we are out of resources, there are no guarantees. Uh, the pot either starts immediately or possibly can never start because there are no free resources and we as uh, pot do not have any uh, limit on uh, runtime. The, those resources can be occupied forever. Also, we, or, or we can manually adjust the priority of new pod to evict some already running pod, but uh, this is problem as I have said with scientific computation. Also, resource uh, reclaiming is not solved because there is no pod lifecycle management. And also there is no such thing as a fair share in uh, Kubernetes, meaning that uh, Kubernetes could guarantee a user that uh, the pod will eventually run. And also Kubernetes uh, scheduler does not do any reservation for big pods, uh, only, only at cost of eviction again, but this is still not good for scientific computation. So, and also there is no automation. So this is all from uh, our lightning to short lightning talk. And if you have any ideas uh, that could uh, help us uh, so, uh, to solve the problems, we would be happy if you reach us at the contact below. So thank you for your attention.